Let's take a look inside the $35 billion addiction treatment industry. I'm Kevin O'Hara for AlcoholMastery.com. Today I wanted to talk about uh, an article that I read in Forbes magazine, um, which was to do with the uh, alcohol addiction treatment industry, right, which is worth 35 billion US dollars just in America alone, right? This is not looking at anything outside uh, the US. So this article stated that there were 23 million people in this article said that there was 23 million people in the US that were addicted to uh, alcohol or some other drug, right? I mean, personally, I think that figure is very, very low. I think there's an awful lot of people who are addicted to, or at least dependent on um, alcohol or some other drug, right? They reckon that two and a half million of these people are going through formal uh, addiction treatment, right? They're going to um, uh, an addiction treatment facility, right? So some somewhere like Hazelden or Betty Ford Clinic or one of those places. And those are the top end places. But um, as I say, it's a, a market worth 35 billion in the US. And these people are claiming that they've got an 80 percent success rate right now I've read a lot about this kind of stuff and 80% sex, uh, success rate is complete bullshit you know as the article states I'll put the link down below in on the website um, as the article states most of these places rely on the AA right so a 12-step program to do their uh, as part of their, their whole system, right? That's what the basis of their system is. And the success rate of AA is very low. You know, it's dependent on who you listen to. It's, some people will say, well, it's definitely below between five and 10%. This article says five and 10%, but I've read um, in some areas that it's below 5%. And really it's not a treatment, you know, it's not a treatment, it's an organization, it's a, a movement. It's, people get together and they try and help each other, but there is no real treatment other than going to um, regular meetings and your beliefs being held up by uh, the group. Now, whatever you think of AA, um, whatever you think about the, the philosophy behind, behind AA or how they go about their meetings or whatever it is, you know, the, the doctrine, the indoctrination, whether you think it's a cult or not, um, is a different thing. I don't personally think it's a cult. I think it's uh, an organization which has been set up to, I think, to help people, but I don't think it does help most people. You know, if you've got, even if you've got less than, you take the top end of that figure, 10%, then, you know, it means 90% failure rate. It means 90% of the people that go to AA fail and that's not an effective treatment you know and as they say it's not a treatment but it's what a doctor will send you to you know you know it's what a judge will send you to I mean they can you can go to court in the United States um, and the judge can actually say to you yeah I'm forcing you to go to the AA right you know, that is the same thing as a judge turning around and saying to you, well, yeah, I see that you've got a broken leg there. Um, I'm ordering that you get the leg, the leg amputated or I'm ordering that you get put down, you know, like a horse because we can't do anything for it, you know. It's exactly the same thing, you know, as judge has got no knowledge in this area. He's got no knowledge of um, what works and what doesn't work. And there's a judge saying, well, yeah, I believe that, that this is what you should be doing or the legal system is saying, this is what you should be doing. This is where you should get your treatment. Uh, and as I said, it's not, an, it's not an effective treatment. It's not a treatment, you know? Um, and because it's not a treatment, it doesn't work. 
you know, it works for a small minority of people. Um, I mean, what I say about this doesn't make any difference, right, to anyone else, right? If, if people go there and they feel that they're getting help, right, even if they're going there and it's, they're doing it 10 years later and they're still going to AA treatment and they feel that, they, that this is what's keeping them off the alcohol, then fair play, you know? If you feel that that's what's working for you, then that's good for you, right? But if, if I went to a place, right, and I was still going to that place 10 years later uh, for treatment, for a condition, for a disease, you know, then I would personally not feel that that was working for me, you know? Do you know what I mean? It just doesn't make any sense to me, you know, to be... Working treatment means you go somewhere and you're, you get help with it and you're over it. You know, it's like, how long does it take for a broken leg to heal? Six weeks? Two months? You know? If you're not getting treatment, if, if success is equated to um, getting away from the thing that you're trying to get treated, you know, in all fairness, and... You know, that just doesn't make any, just doesn't make any sense to me, but I'm getting off the point again. I sort of, I don't want to feel, you know, come across that I'm AA bashing, right? I'm not trying to bash AA, but I'm trying to say, well, you know, the system that AA is based around, for me, doesn't work, right? It wouldn't work for me because I don't want to be tied to that, uh, thinking anymore I don't want to be tied to thinking that I'm an alcoholic that I've got this problem for the rest of my life that I have to search out a higher power power and I have to believe in something that I don't believe in right in order for this to work so it's just a no-no for me right it just you know from day one it doesn't appeal to me right so that's probably why you know it's not going to work um me I like to have personal control I like to control what I do in my mind. I believe that I've got ultimate control over the direction that I take, over um, the way that I think about things, over whether, you know, obviously if I break my leg right, I can't control that, right? I've got to um, knuckle down and just accept the fact that my leg is broken. If I try and walk on it, no matter how much I use my mind, it's not going to work, right? But um, that's a medical issue. I don't believe alcoholism is a medical issue. I don't believe alcoholism is, uh, in the term, the way that they use the, the, the word alcoholism, I don't think that that is an issue. I think, I believe it's a habit. Um, I believe that it's an addiction, yes. It's a, a habit that's gone a bit too far in one direction. And, uh, but I believe that I can control that. I believe that I don't think about alcohol anymore. I'm three and a half years into this thing, right? And I do not think about alcohol anymore. I don't feel like I need alcohol as a part of my life anymore. I feel that alcohol was holding me back. And it was like a, a rubber band that was pulling me back and back and back. And now that rubber band has been released. And I'm able to do the things in my life that I want to do. And I don't have these things hold, you know, the, the label. I don't have the disease. I don't have any of that bullshit, right? So, the whole point of this, uh, this video is to highlight that there is massive money to be made by trying to convince you that you've got something which is out of your control, right? I mean, they're talking about between, for the lower end um, of this spectrum of uh, treatment centres, uh, of anywhere, what do they say? They're talking about the cost of treatment on the lower end of the spectrum. Um, so for the, uh, you know, just for the bog standard treatment centres, right? Um, between 15 and 23 thousand dollars, right? And if you go to Hazelden or the um, Betty Ford Clinic, who have recently joined forces, right? So that they can 
uh, be a little bit more effective you're talking about twice that much at least right that's per 30 days every 30 days you've got to pay this and in order for you to be willing to pay out such large sums of money right parents fucking mortgaging their homes you know putting themselves into a lifetime of debt right in order for for them to convince you enough to do that they've got to pull across a fairly good case that what you've got is life-threatening that you can't deal with this yourself that it's you know completely out of your control that you have a disease and all this other bullshit right and for me AA completely falls into that box right this is what AA teaches and regardless of their good intentions they're a voluntary organization fair enough right fair dues to them but it's the mentality that it breeds in people is that they're out of control they don't control this part of themselves that they have to look outside of themselves right to whatever that is a higher power whatever that meaning comes across in the individual it's something outside of themselves which means that they can't deal with it themselves now I'm living proof that you can deal with this yourself right there are thousands hundreds of thousands millions of people who have stopped drinking on their own right there is a big mythology surrounding alcohol and alcohol use and alcohol abuse for me there is no defining line between alcohol use and abuse right it's the same thing as if I was saying to you well this guy's drinking fucking bleach right so is he using bleach or is he abusing bleach right everyone would say the guy's abusing this stuff right he's abusing his body that's the way I think about alcohol if you're putting this stuff into your body you're abusing your body right if you're putting um, four cheese pizzas into your body you're abusing your body right you're asking your body to do things and to overcome things just because you like the taste or because you want to get a buzz right because you want to feel good for a moment right so your body has to deal with all the crap all the consequences of that right this is abuse this is personal abuse and look as I say this thing just riles me up because it, you know it's somebody trying to take my personal control away from me and I'm trying to rile against that as much as I can you know because I really want to um, maintain as much control over myself I think your control emanates from your mind um, first and foremost is where you have the most control in your life then your environment you can control certain aspects of your environment and thirdly the least control you have is of the people in your life and it's the opposite way around when you look at people trying to control your mind in order for them to make a profit right and not just a profit they want to fucking be rich they want to make themselves they're just greedy fucking bastards right who want to uh, make themselves as rich as possible on the backs of other people's suffering and you know if you think well you know they're they're trying to cure people suffering by extracting thousands and thousands and thousands of people of uh, dollars from people who are already having problems you know this is it's a fucking disgrace you know absolutely and you know this is this is where my whole process my whole thinking goes my whole reason goes for uh, for these videos is because in the beginning when I stopped drinking I didn't know where to turn or what to turn to I really thought that I was this alcoholic person who had a, a, a disease and that I was now a misfit and um, I was some somebody that was outside of this part of society and all the doctrine all the websites that I was looking at all the what would you say the the authorities on the subject right you know these people these are household names Hazelden and Betty Ford even for me and you know I'm Irish 
but I have heard of Betty Ford, I've heard of the Hazelden Clinic, and you know, these, these were authorities, and these were all telling me that I was an alcoholic, that I had a problem, and that this problem was going to last me for the rest of my life. And, you know, as a person, as an individual, that just made me feel like crap. You know, it's, it's a, I felt like an outcast of sorts. You know, really, the truth is that you're not an outcast, far from it. You're an outcast when you're doing this shit to yourself, right? You're... You know, when you're pouring fucking alcohol inside your body, it's, um, you're outcasting yourself from yourself. I mean, it's, uh, you're, it's like the horse going along with, with the blinkers. You just, you don't see anything else. You don't see any other way of living. You just see this. And that's the way they're trying to maintain those blinkers onto you, these people, these organizations. Um, keep the blinkers on and keep you going down this route where they're going to make money instead of the alcohol companies making money they're now going to make money you know I wouldn't even be surprised if you know underneath it all that the whole lot of them are not in fucking cahoots with each other you know to uh, as a process because you know once the alcohol company's marketing will only take you so far, right? Once they've got you hooked on the stuff, it's the same thing as the cigarettes. They don't need to push you any further. They don't need to advertise to you because you're already hooked into the system, right? Um, all they do then is a few advertisements here and there just to uh, for brand loyalty, right? To keep you loyal to the brand. Um, so until you start to think for yourself and you start thinking, well... Yeah, I'm having problems with this and my life is not going the way I want it to and I'm sort of thinking about alcohol then wouldn't it make sense for these people to also have like a line in the way out section right so they have a like a counter at the exit of the nightclubs saying oh well you know if alcohol drinking is getting a bit too much for you then we've got the solution come on down and come into our facility where we will give you 80% chance of success while they're treating you with a 12-step program which has got uh, at best a 10% chance of success. How the fuck does that even equate? It doesn't. It's all lies. It's propaganda. Oh, I'm going to end this one now because I'm just getting so fucking mad. Really, you know, from both sides of this coin, we are duped from day one from as soon as you, from before day one, you know. You know, this propaganda bullshit takes place from the moment that you're born, we're starting to get indoctrinated into the drinking, into this lifestyle where we're poisoning ourselves, whether it be through alcohol or cigarettes or bad food. I mean, I've done all that shit. Why? to line somebody else's fucking pockets to make them multi-billionaires, right? And to have, you know, just absolutely... <laughs> to have lifestyles which are beyond, you know, lavish, which are beyond um, rich. The mega, mega, mega rich people, you know? All on the backs of other people suffering. Uh, so many people are going through these lives now and you know, these people have got their, their lives where they can uh, live in palatial mansions and on grounds and bodyguards and, you know, whatever else they've got. And then you've got a guy who's fucking dealing a bit of weed and he can be put in prison for it, you know, for years. You know, dealing a bit of smack and he's going, yeah, you're right, you're, you're in prison for 20 years for doing this. Uh, Not going to say any more on this anyway look if you have any comments about this this is a really touchy subject i know that a lot of people uh, understand this so leave a comment down below love to hear what you have to say about this you know uh, it all helps this is the community here so let's help each other let's help each other to get through the hard times and you know pull people forwards you know, it takes people who have who've gone through this whole system and have gone out the other end and are, are dealing with this, you know, themselves, 
who are dealing with this, who've got the control back to themselves, right, and have dealt with this whole system through their own control. It takes those type of people to stand up and say, this is what I've done, you know, this is my life now, and it's all because I've done it myself. You don't hear from those people often enough, and I think that that's, you know, it's something that we should be sort of shouting out, you know, and this is bullshit, what you listen to here is bullshit. You don't have to listen to that. How many people have you seen coming out of the rehab and then, you know, they say, well, yeah, I've, and I have to go back in again. Why is that? Because <laughs> it doesn't fucking work. You know, it doesn't work. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, the only system that really works is a system that is using, um, is bringing you away from thinking about the alcohol or thinking about the drug or thinking about the shit food, right? You know, and it's all here. This is your system. It's in your mind. You have got the ultimate control. You know, anything else, when you're using, trying to use a tool to keep you sort of in the loop, um, you know, the e-cigarettes is, is, is one of the things. And oh, look, going too far into this, look, um, I'm going to end this now. So, uh, if you have any comments, please do leave them down below. I'd love to hear positive, negative comments, whatever. Um, until next time, stay safe, please. Uh, keep the alcohol out of your mouth. It's the only way that you're ever going to beat this. Keep the alcohol thoughts at bay. You know, for every alcohol thought that you think, for every negative alcohol thought that you think, that you think is going to drive you back towards alcohol, make sure you have a positive thought there that you can replace it with. You know, and keep repeating those things over and over in your head. I'm finished with alcohol. Alcohol is no good for me. Alcohol is my enemy. Alcohol, that lifestyle is my enemy. The lifestyle of putting shit into my body and trying to squeeze out a momentary bit of pleasure is not real pleasure. It's only, uh, it's a momentary blip on the map, which is gonna bring you long-term consequences. So look. As I say, keep yourself safe, above all. Uh, I'm Kevin O'Hara for AlcoholMastery.com. Onwards and upwards.